and I started thinking differently. So I didn't start, I didn't think like how I think now until I started making more money than what I used to make. Mm -hmm. And then with more money to play, you can make more moves, you can do more stuff. And, so you, you, and, and then, a tool. Yeah, it's yeah. a tool. It's, a, it's exactly how I see money as a tool. And with that, like then, you know, that financial freedom starts coming in, you feel a little bit more stress free and you're like, oh, I gotta go to work because, you know, this is what keeps me going, you know, like it drives me. So like, that's why I told you, like for me, when I wake up in the morning, I'm happy every day. Yeah, do I feel tired? Yes, obviously. Sometimes do I want to sleep in? Yes. But when I wake up, I still wake up 100%. Now, I never, com I hair. never complain about me coming to work. Wow. Ever. That's, that's beautiful. Ever. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another segment. Uh, it's our third episode, I believe. Yeah. Um, today, unfortunately, we don't have Joe Bryan, but we have OD back in the house. Oh, sorry. And then we have Tim to my right, right here. So, you know, as always, I appreciate you guys watching. This segment is kind of just, kind of just a conversation about different topics. Usually, we'll talk about topics that we face or that maybe you're facing. So, I'm opening up the, the stage right now. I'll talk about um, how how I deal with it. I'm gonna ask you guys how you guys deal with it when you guys kind of reach a plateau. Um, and reach a wall, mm -hmm. you know, especially, you know, you being a barber, you've probably faced this, you know, you probably with different work and stuff. For me, you know, sometimes a creative process, yeah. I get stuck. So I want to open up the stage to that. I want to ask, I want to start with OD first, because I want to kind of ask him this question, because owning a business is, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's hard. Hard, one of the hardest things. Yeah. And also, dude, I, I don't know if you agree, but it's also like an art. Kind of, I don't know. I don't know if you see like an art, kind of like the way you build it, the way you piece things. But um, how how do you? I don't know when you face different things in this industry or in your shop. How what what do you do, man? What's like the process first? And I'll explain my my way. Yeah. Of thinking. Well, I mean, for me, um, uh, I feel like everything falls on me personally. Me because like um, I'm like the first one in my family to do a lot of stuff that I'm doing right now. Yeah. So in order for look, uh, looking for guidance, I have to do that on my own mm -hmm. because nobody in my family owns a business. Yeah. Nobody in my family, you know, knows how to manage uh, a business like this, you yeah. know? And uh, well, for guidance, I have to, you know, invest in myself a little bit, you know, Google, uh, talk to like-minded people, yeah, yeah. business owners, which I don't really know any other business owners that own barbershops that I relate to, you know, mm -hmm. like, and I can talk to. But for the most part, I mean, this is pretty much it all falls on me, mm -hmm. and then um, I take the the initiative of doing everything, and it's all a learning process. I don't know how to do it either. I'm still learning. I've yeah. only been in business, uh, uh, business, business uh, three years, you know, and I have people that work for me, uh, work fast. with me, Hell fast. and um, they say average business is uh, three to five years. So I'm on my fourth one already. So. You know, business is good. It's going good. I do what I feel like is best uh, for the shop, for myself, and uh, I take in consideration people's opinions, and um, I just go off of that. Mm -hmm. And um, that's pretty much how I have I been running the shop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. No, definitely, dude. I I, I don't know, Tim. Like, I, I feel like I have my own like yeah, like my plateau sometimes, and I stress myself out. That's one of the things I I, I feel. But how do you deal with like that, like? The wall. So my story is when I had the business, I I've had a wake up call. I said, you know what? I need to pivot. Uh, the market, the strategy, the execution plan, it was flawed, <clears throat> and I had to kill my ignorance and my being naive. Like you know, what? I'm gonna figure it out on my own. So that's where I started seeking external, true learning learning <clears throat> the systems. But when I hit that wall. I've always been like a mind over matter, mm -hmm. like staying positive type of person. But that phase of my life when everything crashed down is like when the, my body, my body starts speaking for me. Like I wake up with so much anxiety, uh, stress. Like I wasn't myself. Like my body was speaking for me. So what I had to do is kind of really take a step back. And like <clears throat> mental health is by far one of the most important things. So what I did is I kind of changed priorities from building to healing. So that's when I learned a lot about mindfulness, started reading about monks, uh, meditation, anything that I, I thought would help me because I, I was really searching for that um, 
clarity to to feel better I didn't, mm. I didn't like that feeling so I did a ton of research um, that's just one aspect of like dealing with the, yeah. the problem yeah. but the mindfulness um, mindset is something that is universal and from that I'm glad I, I'm actually glad it happened because it introduced me I really want to look so I saw and I use that mindset every single day like okay. I tell people if they ask me some advice hey like, I'm going through this I'm like, look into mindfulness you know it's it's grand it's it's a lot but once you implement that into your life it's it's really game changing would you say I mean I feel like both of you guys explain like like the biggest ones like the biggest impactful ones but you know I've had my my impactful one obviously when I shifted my mindset from going to like finally figuring out um who I wanted to be right but also I think that was like the hardest part for all of us but I think I mean you face different dilemmas every every day right mm -hmm. what's like I don't know for me like I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna open up the stage for myself it's like the creative process like the hardest part for me when I face it is understanding the emotions that makes me feel so for example if I go back and edit this video later on I'm gonna look up a YouTube video like how to do transitions or something whatever but I, I'll clutter my mind with a lot of information that I, it overwhelms me and then just like a couple episodes ago bro I talk about like fuck man I feel pressured so that's how I have started learning like that's a wall I hit in the creative process that's the hardest part for me and I, I'm not saying that's the hardest part to accept it and kind of just like oh that's, I'm always gonna face that but I'm trying to find new ways on how to now, I don't want to say balance, but kind of maneuver around it yeah. where I could deliver my best product. I think you set yourself, you clutter your mind. Yeah. As an artist, that's where I think, that's why I love art because art, there's no real explanation. It just is. Mm -hmm. And when you find your style, I think you're kind of trying to find your style of content creation or the creative aspect. Once you find your style, you just do. You don't really yeah. do it. Like you tap into <coughs> your own, uh, internal creativity. But it's like an everyday thing though. Like I feel, I don't know if you face different, like how do you deal with the everyday walls? I don't know if you like, for example, how you, you work with a, a, a client based system, you know? I don't know how, if you face clients that kind of like, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. get you off the yeah. game or something. Or like maybe that day you woke up, like, dude, I don't feel like cutting hair. I know that mm -hmm. last time I talked to you, you said, dude, like I wake up, this is what I love, I wake up. Yeah. So you probably don't wake up with that ever, but. What's one dilemma you kind of face like every day where it's kind of like, how do I actually over, overcome this? You know? Yeah, that's, that's I feel like question. it never stops, bro. Definitely, yeah. It's like an everyday thing. Not Maybe not every day, but it's a it's something that just not, you don't have one big one it's all over with. I think like Ray Dalio, his book Principles, how he, he talks about, we got to search and keep climbing towards the pinnacle. Mm -hmm. And then once we reach the pinnacle, you realize <clears throat> that there's a new pinnacle. Mm -hmm. So once you have that idea, like OD, he loves his work, but he knows that every day he's progressing that one day he's, he's his dreams are bigger than what is currently reality so by him having the perspective and the idea and the belief that something's bigger he's being pulled to it he gravitates towards that so that's what personally helps me a lot like having the belief in, it's faith you have faith mm -hmm. in something bigger and better than what's possible or what's reality right now and that pulls you that gravitates you so that's my mm -hmm. my thing because i wake some days i wake up it's interesting because when i wake up that's when like i don't know what happens to my brain my body chemical reactions sometimes i wake up and i'm like low like my energy's low and that's like the only time of the day that i'll feel that 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 low but when, when i wake up i just remember like all right like i'm putting in my work putting in my hours i'm deserving what i want because i know or i believe one day this will pay off What's, this will be grand I will live a life that uh, true impact and mm -hmm. something that is bigger than what's present so that's how you do it but how how do you explain that process like for example like a how to manual like um, uh, like what, what I got from that is kind of like you just gotta have a belief mm -hmm. you gotta have the faith have but like to. let's suppose someone's watching and it's like oh that's you know how do you find faith so it's like you know it's, yeah, I, okay. I'm not saying okay. I'm not saying yeah, like you know lay it out there awareness <clears throat> no yeah, yeah but you know it's always I'm always in the you know challenge like not challenge yeah, yeah, you yeah, that's what it is that's like, what it is yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm not challenging you I'm just kind of just saying like you know it's always gonna be like well how do you do that how do you reach how do you reach awareness my, my thing is like how did you figure awareness out? okay well, this goes back to so to put it one sentence it's awareness about awareness once you become aware of your awareness, you have the superpower to become an independent thinker 
and you start understanding, okay, what do I want to learn? How do I learn? How I feel like it, it's completely game changer. It's like updating your software. Mm-hmm. So, like, I had this exact question for the story of this one incredible guy, crazy story, and he changed his life for the better. And I think anyone can change their life for the better. But what it comes down to is, <clears throat> is it fate? Or is you you build that yourself, or like what happens? And I think it's a combination of fate and exposures. So for me, you know, fate in what way? Like what you're destined, or like, like your destiny. Like, I would say external factors that you don't have control over. Mm-hmm. So for example, like, like I was born born mm-hmm. in the family I was born into, born with this body type to you know create external factors to my appearance, and then get um, you know the way you look is people treat you different based on how you look in in reality um where i was born Hoss, california very close to you know tech based and and it's Mm -hmm. a grand opportunity here Mm -hmm. and uh, everything that i didn't have control over and even things that like for example if i go if i'm driving and something a car hits me like that's fate because i didn't have control of that car going into it's an external factor and and these external external factors can be some types of situations for me it was the video of ty lopez and like that opened my eyes you know that was my fate what if i didn't have access to the internet Mm -hmm. what if i wasn't even open to the idea in the first place because my parents didn't have an open mind so all these things kind of just going back and dissecting like how what your position and how you got out here based on the fact that you didn't get here at least in the first part of your life you didn't get here because of your decisions is yeah, because the fate yeah, like, it's like blind luck. We all have that. Um, some people, I didn't really view it like that to to would you say that? I mean, would you say that's kind of like get diving into like gratitude, just kind of being thankful? Because yeah, yeah. I, I feel like that's a big part, of like where I kind of I don't want to say I lack, but it's hard. I, like, sometimes I, I, I it's Me like too. man, I'm stressed out. Why am I stressed out? Um, just recently, I started writing things down, like notes at least. And like I've always mentioned, dude, like the the place of my my most creative thinking happens in the shower. Just the other day, dude, I got out of the shower and I was like, I'm going, you know, I was in my towel going into the notebook. Like, nice. So it's like, just to make sure I write it down, but, you know, kind of going back to like how I asked you, like how that happens, how you find, how you understand that fate is something you can't control. Nice. I don't know how OD sees this or how he's kind of experienced this, but at least for myself, I guess it's just kind of like, it, it's it's almost like, it, for me, it was it was very uh, quick, a quick mindset in this, in, in and it happened that night that we stayed up till three in the morning where, I hit, where we were in Javi's garage. After that day, like the same way you experienced Ty Lopez's video, it just opened like a different, I tapped into a different field. That, the quote, my, my all time, one of my all time favorite quotes, Confucius, he says, we live two lives. We, we start living our second one, we realize we have one. And like, it's crazy because you, you, you can pinpoint that moment and yeah. I, I can pinpoint my moment. I met a lot of people that can pinpoint that moment, and sometimes it, you don't pinpoint it, but it's like a gradual change that when you look back in hindsight, you're like, oh, okay, like I'm in my my second second Cause life. Because now that that was fate, you know. I, if I look back at it, I, I could say that was fate, but it's also came to a decision that I made. So it's like, it's almost like that whole idea where you you create. But let, let's dissect that further. Mm-hmm. You make decisions based off what? Let me ask you that. What do you? How does one? make decisions right some people make good decisions some people make bad decisions but what is that internal processor that makes the decisions uh it's at least if i, I could explain it, it's just i make decisions on based on what i want mm. and sometimes what i want might not be logical so when you well, say well, good, how, how do you decide what you want how do i decide what i want i guess what when i decide what i want i guess is it's a process. It, honestly, it's an emotional roller coaster, especially when I talk about what I want. Because sometimes what I want, how do I explain <laughs> this, bro? Because I'm trying to figure it out myself. <laughs> I'm like, how do I want what I, I know want. what you're asking, like, but I don't know. I don't know what, what answer to because because okay, uh, let's go back uh, before. Maybe uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say I'm, I'm ignoring the question, but let's go back before figuring out. Finally, I want to make decision based on what I want. Because before that, before that pinnacle, it was always like I'm do, making decisions based on what I think I want. Because okay, but it has to do a lot with 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 social social structure, um, and and parenting. You know what I mean? 
But so like nurture. Yeah, but it's so here. Here's a, how I, I've been becoming fascinated this year. Like every year, I kind of focus on different concepts and re- kind of revolve everything around it. First year was really about like awareness, more psychological psychological aspects. Second year was more business orientated. Third was like external social factors, relationships. This year, biggest focus is on the word judgment. Mm -hmm. So judgment is the internal process and the the way you process everything to create a a decision. Because your judgment is is what allows you to be aware. If I make this decision, your judgment makes you aware of all these possible variables and outcomes that are possible. So you make the best decision because of your current judgment, but your judgment is constantly evolving. It's like whenever yeah, you yeah. look back, I am like, dude, how could I be so dumb? It's because your judgment was limited and it was not a Are you saying it's based on the circumstance at that moment? Are you, is that what you're saying, based on judgment? Because well, like, like your, your judgment decision- works with the circumstances, and your, your circumstances do create your judgment. So, yeah, like it's a, yeah. it's a loop. No, definitely. But judgment is... Naval Ravikant. Khan... He, he had a great, very good point that judgment is just your awareness of external factors and what's possible from every decision you make. And wisdom is internal decision making that you're aware of of outcomes, but more of an internal process. So judgment is external, wisdom is internal. And like, um, like self-esteem is the reputation you have upon yourself. So people that have good self-esteem is because they have the ability to either make decisions that make food. People, get, like for example, going, going to the gym and being active. You build that, you do that decision because of your wisdom and then you start getting that feedback. All right, I went to the gym, I did this, I know it's good. So you start cultivating a better self-esteem. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, the chemical imbalances, Yeah, I, but, definitely. No, yeah, dude, that was, that was a good question because now you got me thinking, how do I, how do I come up with what I want or, you know, how? What's that's why the question because is, does free will truly exist? Mm. I never really thought like, about that, that way. Comes in. Because of judge, the judgment, you're saying? Well, so everything you go through in life creates your judgment. Mm-hmm. Since, but since you don't have control of everything you go through in life, mm-hmm. you don't really create your judgment. But you can do, once you get old enough, you do have enough um, power to manipulate and change everything in your environment. But even you get to that point and your that evolved judgment that got you to the words that you can change things it was already made with stuff that you didn't have control over so right now you, you said like when you get old enough so it becomes an age thing as well i think that's where is it based age, is it ex- age experience experience because i mean exposure that's okay, the word exposure, exposure. exposure. for example because like if i wanted to expose myself compared to someone i mean it's first of all it's probably not not um I don't want to say it's possible, but it's, it's really unrealistic in the sense where, like, let's suppose I want to expose myself right now at 23 years old, expose myself to what someone 60-year-old has exposed themselves, right? Based on their timeline, they've actually just been exposed to things without even trying. But if I actually purposely put myself in exposure as that, it... it you accelerate it. That's why yeah. reading is an, an advancement to, ex, to exposure. You're getting the exposure of all these people in specific domains. And you're exposing yourself to that information, so you get that interpretation, and you accelerate mm-hmm. that exposure. Like exposure is probably like the only true form of learning because you get empirical, empirical. knowledge yeah. and experience. So exposure, <laughs> exposure creates your judgment, but you don't have control of the exposure you get in the beginning. Mm-hmm. You get more control when you get older to get your freedom, right? When you get wealth, you have the option to decide, right? Do I want to live in this environment where it's less safe, more survival um, aspect, or in a more in an abundant environment where I can thrive more. You have the control with wealth, but you also, you know, you can't do that when you're by control, 10 you years mean, old. By control, do you mean like like um, decision making that is more efficient based on what you've already been exposed to? Like, okay, you prune out things that just probably won't work out. Is that the control you're talking about? Yeah, I would say, I wouldn't say efficient though. I would say what you, your judgment believe is best. Mm. Based on your, based on, your past mm-hmm. exposures. Mm-hmm. That's interesting, bro. It's it's pretty it's pretty complex because it's it's like one of the most complex things. Brain fart. <laughs> well, like <laughs> it, it, it just comes down to like 
for example, us, we're, we're making this video, right? We're creating this, this content because A, the aspect of we like it, we genuinely like doing it. So there's something in our DNA, our neuro neurological wiring that we create chemical reactions that makes us feel good when we do it. So it's a reward for us. But we got to this point because like, I, I'm a big believer that family, if you're born in a certain type of family, it's gonna give you the parallel of life. So we- If you're not aware of it though. I would say even like, no matter what, like if you, like the science and the upbringing of, of like sociology of like a, a, a child that is born like in a very bad household, these people, they, their brain and their physiology changes so much compared to someone that no, of course. grew up in like a, a stable household. So, I think we got to that because you, you, when you meet those people, you kind of you you get that feeling of, and understand like this person has been through a lot. And I don't know if I, I'm a big believer in neuroplasticity. Mm -hmm. You know, you can rewire it and change. But I do think that some traumas and things are so grand that be very difficult to to change so uh, us being born and you know we had a certain type of family growing up environment that got us to a point that we were very malleable and, and I say stable and then um, we started like getting exposures that created this, this mindset and then when this mindset led us to make decisions and here we are mm -hmm. it's funny you said that because I think uh, I just read that in Ray Dalio's book about like we actually because this is a, a conflicting issue with myself because I've come to believe that you, you, you are, your brain is plastic. You could transform your, your environment however you want. You could transform your life however you want. However, it, it, it's, it, it led me to the question of like, are we born this way or do we teach ourselves? Because, you know, you're born as a baby, bro. You don't have the logical, you know, your brain's not, not fully developed, right? However, Ray Dalio speaks about being embedded with, and it's in our DNA. Yeah. So, and it kind of goes back to what we're talking about, like the fate thing. So it's yes. kind of like yeah, exactly. you're damned if you do, and damned, like you're pretty much damned based on the fact how how your family was because it it's been passed Even out, and not so much just our parents, but it's just through through the through new, evolution, new genetics. Yeah, and that's a big fact. So I, and it got me thinking, like how even if like I don't know, I want to ask both of you this, knowing that that we're embedded with such we'll call them habits, we'll call them different uh, characteristics. Mm -hmm. You reach a point where it's like, okay, I understand why I'm like this. You want to change your life. However, you have to understand that those habits that you're kind of aware of are always going to be embedded. Is that is that something that's... Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's like... Yeah, that's a good question. Um, because they, they got me thinking when I read that, I'm like, hmm. I, I, I read it, and honestly, when I read it, it's not so much like I, I'm going to read it and like believe everything they say. It's kind of... It leads you to think for yourself, and that's the beauty yeah. of it. So I started questioning, like, hmm, is, does that mean that I'm always going to be embedded with, with certain characteristics that I willingly chose not, or chose yeah. to change, right? Like, do I have to accept that fact? You know what I mean? What do you, what do you well, think? I don't, I don't know. Like, yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Put me in a hard position. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it's yeah, yeah, part of yeah. like, the conversation because um, there's no right answer. It's just kind of your thought. I mean, I think they'll always be in the back of your head because that's just the way we were like I said, embedded, you know, and it's going to be in us. And I think it goes to, like, culture. Mm -hmm. You don't think so? Because, oh, yeah, definitely like, culture. Um, that, you know, it's handed down, and, like, you don't know it, but it's there. And you're like, what makes us different than another ethnicity, you know? Mm -hmm. I think that's something that stays with us, but honestly, that's that's about the only thing I can think of mm -hmm. right now. Honestly, no, yeah, yeah. I think, it was an interesting but question, I bro. I think we said the first part is, was very important. Like, it always be in the back of your head. So I'm, I'm a big, firm believer in, like, neuroplasticity. <clears throat> you can change your brain. But the question is, how much can you change? And I think the cap lies within genetics. Now, I don't know what exact pinpoints and... Uh, capacities those are, those characteristics. I know, like, for example, anxiety. Some people are just born with higher anxiety thresholds, mm -hmm. and some people aren't. And I think that no matter how much you meditate, how much you're mindful, no matter how much you expose yourself, you are going to be able to control the anxiety, but the anxiety will always be there. 
rather than someone that has the impediment of having lower anxiety threshold. Mm -hmm. See the difference? Mm -hmm. Like you can work around it, but it's always in the back of your head. And a good example that I always ask when I, when I meet someone that um, thinks, I've, I see very conscious and can articulate words in his logical form of thinking, I ask them, okay, let's say like Bill Gates, Elon Musk, these people of, that you can consider geniuses, can someone become a genius at that level? And I've heard both sides, very compelling story, very, very compelling sides. Personally, I believe that those people are gifted. Mm -hmm. Those people, their brain understands patterns in a manner that it just comes innate and naturally to them. And no matter how much I study and how much I learn, I won't be able to catch up to Bill Gates because he's gifted and he's putting in the work. I can polish and create and, and better myself and see better types of patterns, but I'm not as gifted as Bill Gates. And that's my perspective. Um, could but be that's wrong. understanding genetics and, and evolution, right? Because I know what you're talking about. And, and, and On the other hand, Bill Gates is not as gifted. He said it himself. Bill Gates said, um, I'm just extremely lucky to be born at this time in, human in the history of humanity because if I was born during the primitive ages, I would have died. He said, my genetics are not meant to be an active, strong, um, you know, form of, of, of a human being. Mm -hmm. He's more of a, of a thinker. Mm -hmm. So that gives us, like, I'm a little bit more on the athletic side. I can say I'm more gifted than Bill Gates on the physical level, mm -hmm. but Bill Gates is a little bit more gifted at the brain level. And it all comes down to the circumstance, right? Because obviously, genetics. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, like, obviously, if you're talking about Bill Gates being gifted, it's on that side. Because... Mm -hmm like you just said you could probably outrun him in a mile mm -hmm. but you can't outperform him in business yeah, thank you. It, it, it makes sense dude and you said I don't know you really it, it, right now you said something that our our pinpoint is through our genes so are you saying that we're already born with our given peak so it's just up to us to I don't know cause you I, I would say so there's I heard a really good analogy of IQ because IQ is an interesting one right I personally don't like IQ. You, yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> I agree, but then I also think it's extremely relevant. As it's well. relevant, yeah. So IQ, um, you know, like it's just like a universal concept that everyone is aware of. But most people say we can agree that most people don't fully polish and live up to their IQ. But here's the question: They give the analogy that IQ is like the size of a, a water glass, and the way that you live and the way you, you educate yourself determines how much water is put in the glass. Mm -hmm. Most people leave it half empty or less or a little bit more. Right? Very few people reach the point. But going back to Bill Gates, say Bill Gates, his water glass can handle one gallon of water and mm -hmm. my glass of water can handle three quarters of a gallon, just to give the example. And that's like the IQ analogy of mm -hmm. the cap. It's just like the, 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 the water cup size. I think that was a good analogy to yeah. kind of explain it. Makes sense. It's interesting, bro. It's just interesting because if you look, it's honestly a lot of this stuff has just to do with your DNA. Yeah. But the, the, beautiful, the beautiful part is just that You're you can rewire and you can grow. Like you, mm -hmm. I don't think like one can possibly reach the cap. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of like a form of thinking. So. And that kind of opens up. I kind of like this got me thinking to what your true gift is, and because then in that case, then everyone has a given gift. Some people might feel, you know, based on other, um, for example, I look at Bill Gates like, man, I want to be Bill Gates, but what if I'm not built to be like Bill Gates? Yeah, yeah that's, that's, you know what I mean? that's a beautiful question. So a beautiful it, question. it really gets you thinking like, damn, like then it, does it really come down to doing what you want or doing what you want, knowing what you're good at? Peter Drucker. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, bro. Peter, Peter Drucker has an amazing book on that. It's called Managing Oneself. Oh, yeah, yeah. It talks about most people think they know what they're good at but most of the time they're wrong and the only way to be the best at something is to do something that you're naturally good at but the question is how what do you is, find out yeah. yeah like for example i could jump in there on that on that topic like quick little for people listening to this <clears throat> i never wanted to be a barber you know ever i didn't even cross my mind for me it was a hustle i'm like all right i'm making sad money quick cash but everybody would tell me, bro, you're hella good. Bro, you're hella good. Me, my, my goal was being in the military. I wanted to be, be a Marine because of the 
the benefits. No, no, not the benefits. The commercials I used to see. Oh, oh really? Nice suits, <laughs> nice. They looked all free and right. stuff. I was like, man, like the respect they got, like served their country. Like that was my thing. But everybody said, like, bro, you're good at barbering, and everybody at that area only though. Everything else, I was a mm-hmm. fuck up. You know, like I got kicked out of school here and there, and parents always telling me stuff. Other parents are telling me like, oh, you gotta straighten up. But the one thing everybody would always tell me I was good at was cutting hair. Cutting hair and playing soccer. Mm -hmm. But I was like, man, there's a lot of people that play soccer and they're better than me. So I was like, but like cutting hair, here in Hollister at the time, there was only another guy that would cut. But I never wanted to be that because I I didn't see nothing in it. Like it was just a hustle and that was it. But because I used to like think that there was no money to be made in the barber industry. And honestly, bro, when I first went to barber school, I just went because of the money. Mm-hmm. That was it. I did not go because I loved it. Everybody always says, "It was your driver." Oh, yeah, yeah it was your right. Driver. It was. Mm-hmm. So what you were saying is like, how do you find it? That's how I found it, because everybody told me I was good at it, but I didn't. I mean, I I knew I was good, but I didn't see it like other people seen it. So now, what my one advice I always give people when they ask me like, "Bro, what do you think I should do?" Mm. When people tell me that, I always say the exact same little story I'm telling you. It's like, what do people say you're good at, bro? And then when they say like, oh, well, they always say I'm good at computers. My mom says I'm good at computers. I fixed my brother's computer. I did this to my brother's computer. I'm like, there you go, bro, that's it. Like, they're telling you, bro, people are telling you. It's like anything else, like when they say like, oh, don't play with fire, you're gonna burn yourself. Don't play with fire, another person tells you, boom, and then boom, you burn yourself. It's because people that have lived it, experienced it, you know, they're telling you. So their other eyes are telling you, you're good at this, bro, do it. Go for it, go for it. But you don't believe it in yourself because mm-hmm. you don't see the potential that that can bring you, you know? And like the financial freedom, like, cause like you said, wealthy people can pick, right? They can mold, it, you know? Freedom. So once I started getting that income coming in and I started thinking differently. Mm-hmm. So I didn't start, I didn't think like how I think now until I started making more money than what I used to make. Mm-hmm. And then with more money to play, you can make more moves, you can do more stuff. And, so you, you and, and then, a tool. Yeah, it's yeah. a tool. It's, a, it's exactly how I see money as a tool. And with that, like then, you know, that financial freedom starts coming in, you feel a little bit more stress-free and you're like, oh, I gotta go to work because, you know, this is what keeps me going, you know, like it drives me. So like, that's why I told you, like me, when I wake up in the morning, I'm happy every day. Yeah, do I feel tired? Yes, obviously. Sometimes do I want to sleep in? Yes. But when I wake up, I still wake up a hundred percent. I never, com- I hair. never complain about me coming to work. Wow, ever. That's that's beautiful. Ever. It's rare. That's and my rare. and my lady always tells me like, babe, why don't you ever want to sleep in with me? Why don't you ever just stay with me? I'm like, why? Like I I seriously question myself like why? But then I think back to it. I'm like, oh maybe there's something in her job, or on her inner like feeling that that, yeah. that makes her feel like that. Cause me, I love it. You know, and, and he said, how, how do you grow? <clears throat> I grow when certain situations happen at the shop. Like, for example, there was this lady, he, she came in, she screamed at me. I had never had that happen, you know, ever. So after that, me, my, my belief, I was like, I was thanking God. I was like, oh, thank God that this happened. Why? Because now I know how to react when that situation was to happen again, you know? Mm-hmm. But if that never happened, then I would think like nobody ever screamed at barbers, you know? Yeah. yeah. But now that it happened, I knew how to calm myself. I kept it under control, very professional. The old me, the old old D would have told her off, you know? <laughs> but I kept it cool, like, no, you're a shop owner, you gotta treat yourself like so, and sometimes you gotta, you know, just eat it. Yeah, and, then and, you gotta know how to play the part. You know? So, so going part. back to the, to the question, yeah, 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 no. what we were saying is, um, if people tell you, if, if you can't find what you're good at, listen to what people tell you you're good yeah, at. Yeah, that's a good point. External feedback, but then that's, I think- It gets half, tricky. Half, half, yes, yeah. yes, I, I, okay. I, 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 Tell me what. Go, go for it, you <laughs> go first. Okay, so <clears throat> that's like, like, um, kind of like the reason I worked with the name Tintip, I made the name Tintip is because external factors, like people that see you, they only see a percent mm-hmm. of you, like, like a, uh, only a, a From limited the outside. side, exactly. Like a tinted and window. Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. So they don't really know who you are as an individual, and I think getting external feedback is good uh, form of validation. But yeah, the very first thing is you gotta be an independent thinker. 
you gotta think for yourself and try it out. And if you get that feedback from external parents, okay, like it's verifying and proving that which you, which you thought was true, true because you can. And also try to get unbiased feedback because sometimes people like if a stranger compliments you on something, like, okay, you're onto something. Because if a friend, family, they tell you something, it's it's gonna be less weighted and less relevant because the bias can come into play. But also what, what you're saying was also that made me think is. Um, like the exposure and knowing how the older people kind of know about but once you really I think like education and learning is by far the most powerful thing a human being can do is that you can get like a like a a view from a, a grand picture it's like a lens yes you can zoom and in you, and you can out. zoom out and you start seeing so many bubbles of op or options for example I think I know I, 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 I've been around you long enough to to say I know an area you're good at. I don't I'm not gonna pinpoint it for you because you're an independent thinker, but I have like categories that you have to suit, select from. So like for example, some people are more conceptual. Some people are more logical. Or what fits in logical? Or some people are more form of math. Some people are more form of being unbiased. Okay, well, what well, would well, this lead? This will lead towards maybe a computer science major. Then even go like, well, okay, what type of computer science? Well, this type of programming, mm -hmm. right? It's all trickled down, but you have the categories broken up, but the only way you see the categories is by exposure and continued education. And when you become an independent thinker, you can see where this is. Personally, based off my introspection, I think I'm more of a conceptual person. Mm -hmm. Okay, where, what, what's down here? Well, you could be like a, a thinker, purple, a people person, mm -hmm. communication, etc. So I think, I'm more of a, a thinker, I'm more isolated, more independent. Where does this lead? Oh, the realm of psychology and uh, like metacognition. Okay, take that down. And then you start combining this point to like, you have an area of business. And then you, you create like hybrids and start webs putting and Yeah, webs. webs. It's it, um, Charlie Munger, billionaire, is, is a business partner with, with um, Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, yeah. He, he said that knowledge is like a lattice work. A lattice work are like those fences in the, in the gardens, right? Yeah. That, that are literally like this. The fences that are kind of like that? Yeah, where the, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's literally knowledge. Like this could be a certain domain of knowledge, da, 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 and you start connecting it. But the most important part of you being an independent thinker is you select it and then mm -hmm. you, you you try it out, get feedback from it, and if it's, it's valuable, like move forward with that. Yeah. No, yeah, dude, I think, like I said, um, we have a few few more minutes before okay. this this ends, but uh, I think we talked a lot about. I just it's just crazy, bro. It got me thinking, man. It, <laughs> it just, got me thinking. It got me bro. thinking. It made me like you know. It's and I love that because it makes you think. It's gonna make me a better person. It's gonna make me you know open up and yeah. tap into different realms and and dude, uh, yeah, man. I don't know. It's 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 pretty intense stuff, bro. So talk about genetics, DNA, <laughs> exposure, exposure, uh, experience. Uh, OD had some some pretty, you know, it makes sense. And it, we talked about being uh, uh, independent thinker, and I, I like what I like what we came, you know, what was out here on the, on the on the on the stage. Yeah, it's more. I'm having a hard time talking right now, bro, because just like fuck, so dude, there's much. so much fucking <laughs> shit that it just gets you thinking, man. Like you know, this this is, but it's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. So, but yeah, man, I don't know, dude. For you guys watching, um, I don't know. Maybe get a notebook. <laughs> I take some mental notes. Uh, we rush it again. Uh, maybe even try just listening to it. Yeah. You know. Like I think the good thing that what we're doing is we're kind of just delivering what we've learned, mm -hmm. and that's why it's also very important to to be like careful who you listen to, mm -hmm. and once you have that mindset, like find people you yeah. align with, get value, and then also do your own part. Like if you're watching, do your own research. This yeah. is just our interpretation of yeah. our thoughts. But uh, I think the good thing is like we all constantly educate ourselves. Very That's true. like the good thing. We, we, ed we educate ourselves and we just kind of share yeah, it out. That's like why this that. platform. Our great. purpose is just to deliver, not so much to make you think the way we think. Yeah, or, exactly. Or tell you that this is the way. Think it's honestly thinking. to just kind of get you on the path to becoming an independent thinker. Yeah. yeah you know, find your exactly. find your thing. So there you guys have it. Once again, I always appreciate Tim's time. My boy OD right here. Once again, uh, Joe couldn't be here. And big shout out to the yeah, to the homie see, behind uh, the camera, uh, Maori right there. So uh, there you guys have it. I hope you guys uh, keep striving for better and digging for those knowledge bombs. So peace out, guys.